everyone and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. I am seeing all the comments coming in and today is a very exciting day because we have a very special guest here with us today. It is my bestie Jennifer McGuire and we are going to be doing a lot of fun techniques for you today. But before we get started, let's just say hello to Tom. Hey Tom. <laughs> Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Music was a little squirrely at the beginning, but uh, figured it out. That's all right. No problem. We might change up our music and stuff. We are we are looking forward to 2024 to uh, make a few fun changes and things like that. So we'll see. We've all right. Got our graphic designer working on some things. So who knows? But how are you doing? I am better than horrible. Thank you. Babe. Are you uh, ready for today? Yeah. I think. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got Jennifer waiting in the wings. And today, Tom, she and I are going to do a whole bunch of techniques featuring embossing folders. That's what I heard. Yep. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. All let's right. do it. Well, without further ado, shall we bring in the goat herself? Let's bring her in. Okay. Let's welcome Jennifer McGuire. Hey, Jennifer. Hold on a second. <laughs> There Heck? she is. <laughs> Hello. If I knew what sounds a goat made, I would make one right now, but I don't yeah. really know. Yeah. Well, and I'm not going to try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? You look lovely. You look beautiful. I remember that I have... sweater. I yeah, remember see... that sweater. Uh huh. Your ugly I'm Christmas taking a sweater. chance wearing a sweater while crafting <laughs> and menopausal, you know. <laughs> I'm sure it's a good idea. Yeah, it's it's all right. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just tell Mike to put well, the I air have, on. <laughs> I have a fan that Kathy Z sent me for such issues, and the batteries just died. I turned it on, and it just died. Oh no! Good timing. Oh, no. Well, but if you have good. to, if you have to run off and put a tank top on, <laughs> just let me know. I'll cover. I'll come down in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jennifer and I have been texting back and forth about doing another live together because we have so much fun doing these lives together. She and I, I don't know. I mean, we've known each other for a long time and we've spent a lot of in-person time crafting together. And this just feels like an extension of that, except we get yeah. to do it with all of you too and read your comments and it's always so much fun. So um, Jennifer and I are thinking about maybe doing this on a more regular basis, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we came up with a, a good idea this morning and I'm, I'm thinking we need to stick with it. Yeah. So we're going to tell you a little bit more about that at the end of the live. So stay for that. And we're also going yep. to be giving away a gift certificate at the end of the live. So stay Ooh. for that. And the way you enter to win a gift certificate is just to make a comment. That's all you have to do. Just say hello, tell us where you're from, tell us if you're new here. We'd love to know that as well. All right, so Jennifer, you and I decided that today we were gonna do a whole bunch of techniques and it started with, let's just each do a technique with embossing folders. And then we started throwing out techniques and it was like, all right, we'll each do two. And then Jennifer mm -hmm. said, oh, but you know what? Maybe we should do three because I have this. And then I said, oh, and you know what I'd like to do? So now it's up to uh -huh. four techniques each. So this each, is going to yes. be a jam-packed live. It's going to be nonstop. Yep. And we're just yep. going to tag team each other, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. You get to go first. Because I get to go first. <laughs> you are the queen of live crafting. I'm I'm still got my little novice wheels on here. Oh, so. no, you can't even use that excuse anymore. Trainless. You've gone live enough yeah. and crafted live enough that you okay. can't even use that Fair excuse enough. anymore. <laughs> Ooh, I, don't get I, I, I don't get nervous anymore, but, um, you know, it's still not. You know, uh, you're a natural. It's, it's you're a natural. <laughs> we'll make it work. Okay. We'll make it work. 
All right. So it's well, all about embossing folders today, right? Right. So we're going to, we've got a ton of techniques planned for you and I get to be the first one in. So I'm going to just show you the different embossing folders that I'm going to use today. And Jennifer, I think you're going to be using some of the same ones, which is really yeah. nice because for those of you who have some of these embossing folders, you're even going to get more than one idea for using these yep. folders. I keep stepping on my microphone. So I got to, let me tie this up into my pants. I have it going down the back of my shirt through my bra. My goodness. <laughs> See, I was thinking about I, you today and the oh our no. very first conversation that we had oh. together and I was just laughing. We have quite a history. Someday when we've been doing lives together for longer, we'll share that story. That'll there might be a glass of fruit salad that night too. <laughs> Okay, that sounds good. That sounds really good. All right, so let me show you the embossing folders that I'm going to use. So I'm going to be using the tapestry embossing folder. And Tom, as Jennifer and I do these lives, I don't know if you want to just put her on full screen when she's doing her technique and me on full screen. Can that be done? Uh, don't know about that, I would think. Yeah, I would think so. We could try. Right well, now, it's perfect. Well, well, it's perfect here on my end. I'm not sure if we can bring a guest on full screen, but we certainly can give it a try. Um, okay, so we're going to be, I'm going to be using the snowflake embossing folder. I'm going to be using the tapestry embossing folder. I'm going to be using this one. And what's this one called again, Jennifer? <laughs> Lattice. Lattice. And then petite <laughs> flourish and possibly Swiss dot. So all of these are going to be... Um, use today. Now, my first technique I want to show you is a really fun one called the double embossing technique. So this uses actually two different embossing folders. Now, I am going to be using the intercut die cutting machine, but of course you can use any die cutting machine you have. Just follow your machine's instructions for using embossing folders. If you're new to the intercut and you've ordered one or you just took it out of the box or you're even thinking about getting one, the intercut has these dials on the side that allow you to turn the dial from die cut to 2D emboss or 3D emboss. Now, all of our techniques today are going to be using 2D embossing. So I'm going to be leaving my dial on this letterpress 2D emboss. And I have my... Um, this is like a dial in tighter or looser. I have it at the about the minus one and a half to minus two. I want it a little bit tighter so I can get a little bit of a deeper embossing. The thing about this machine is you do want to test it and try different settings to make sure that you find one that you're most comfortable with. So I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock, and this cardstock is an A2 panel. It measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to start with my petite flourish folder. Now I'm putting this piece of cardstock in here. It doesn't matter which way is up, which way is down for this part of the technique, and I'm going to put it onto my white platform, and then I'm going to put my cutting mat right on top. Now, even though it says cutting mat, as long as you have this dial turned to embossing, it becomes an embossing mat. And I'm going to run this through. So if you are new to 3D embossing folders, they're all different. And that can be a little bit of a problem. And that's when you're really going to have to play with this bottom dial to make sure that your 3D embossing folders are getting embossed deeply enough or they're getting embossed not too deeply. So that's the only one that you really have to kind of adjust per embossing folder. If you're using all Gina K embossing folders, once you figure out your setting for one, it's gonna be the same for all. But if you're using maybe Simon Says Stamp 3D embossing folders, they might be different than say Altenew 3D embossing folders. So you will have to do a little bit of tweaking with those with the dial. Okay, now you can see here I've got that beautiful embossed image, and on this side it's raised, and on this side it's recessed. Now, for the double embossing technique, I'm going to use a second embossing folder. And what I want to do mm. here is I want to push out, okay? So I have to find the side where we have solid 
diamonds and then just the lines of the diamonds, okay? Because I want this part of the folder to push up and create the little block pattern onto this piece. And I want to have this piece so that my design is going inward, not this way. I want my design to be recessed on this side, okay? Now, it seems like it would squish the whole design away, but you'll see what happens when we do this. So remember, I've got this so that the recessed part of the image is face up, and then I'm going to push out from the back into the front of the embossing folder. And now I'm so going to- Gina, did you say your, um, your uh, bottom dial is at zero? My bottom dial is actually um, at minus one and a half to, to two, okay. minus two. It's a little okay. tighter. I like it to be a little tighter, um, but you know, depending on different embossing folders, you might not need that, or you might not want that for sure. a certain look. Sure. Okay. So now you can see I have little diamonds going Ooh. through there. My lattice is my, my lines are recessed, but my squares are coming forward. Now on the back, everything is kind of squished, but on the front, because of the order that I did that, and remember there's a replay button. So if you want to go back and watch this again and yep. kind of pause with each of these techniques, you can do that and you will be able to kind of do the step by steps without feeling rushed. Now um, what I'm going to do is gonna here be pretty. is this I'm going to be really pretty. I'm going to take a tranquil teal ink pad and I'm going to just rub all over this and look at what happens. Can you see, you still see that mm -hmm. little bit of design. This starts to look like some beautiful Venetian tile. Ooh. Now, if you don't want that kind of shady look, you can kind of take your ink pad and just kind of go in a circular motion to get a more solid look. You're not going to get any of that ink into those little, those little lattice lines. And also, because that design was recessed, you don't get any of the ink into that design too. So you've got two different kinds of embossing with, with you know, on one piece of cardstock, and that creates a beautiful look. Now, either one of these embossing folders are beautiful by themselves, but together they really look like almost like a pool tile or a Venetian tile or a pretty backsplash. So I really that like those two mixed together. And you can add a so second color in there, you know. Whatever you went you direct to paper, so it just went on the raised areas, right? Exactly. And because yeah. I'm using a felt ink pad, not a foam yep. ink pad, there's no chance that it's going to squish down into the details of this. So right. I would recommend that even if you are a foam pad lover, that you pick up a few pads or even just a couple ink cubes will work. You don't have to have full ink pads, but try a couple of felt or linen style ink pads for this because you can get that ink all over over there and there's no squishing down into the design. There's reasons that you might want foam and you might want to squish down, but for this technique, you don't want to. All right. Do you think so, you could use a brayer too? You might be able to use a brayer. Yeah. I don't know if okay. you're going to yeah. get it quite so solid, Gosh, but pretty. I would definitely try it. You know, that definitely is gorgeous. try it. All right, Jennifer, wow. this is double double embossing. Now let's move over to Jennifer. Cause what are you going to do, Jen? Okay. I don't know. Let's see. Um, I was thinking about what order. So I have three folders that it's funny cause these are the ones that I picked. We, and she picked hers separately and we have similar <laughs> ones. So we have the snowflake, the tapestry and the lattice. Great. So minds. for the, yeah, I know. Well, the tapestry <laughs> is one of my favorite embossing folders of all time. And so these are, by the way, I saw some people ask, like, if you have a different die cut machine, what sandwich to use? Just follow the instructions for using a traditional embossing folder. And those will, those, you know, these Gina K ones should work for that. Yep. All right. So I, I have my intercut here too. I love this baby. I can't, I, I love him. Okay. <laughs> so he's, oh, my, Jennifer, he's my new were, best friend. People were asking about your shoulder. How is your shoulder feeling? It's much better. I went to the surgeon yesterday and he was very happy with my progress. So I'm 
physical therapy is the key. That's the key, right? Yeah. yeah. And you're right. so good at it. And you had it this morning because I was texting yes, her and I then did. she went into physical therapy and I kept texting her thinking, I'm blowing up her phone while she's trying <laughs> trying to do physical therapy. I, well, any kind of distraction is a good distraction because it's not always fun. Okay, so I'm going to use the tapestry first. And I always like to feel like, like Gina said, for the different techniques, you're going to get different results based on what side the front of your cardstock touches, the side where the background is raised and the patterns recessed, or the uh, side where the pattern is raised and the backgrounds recessed. So you just got to feel, feel with your fingers. I'm going to use it how, you know, it was probably meant to be used where the pattern is bumped up and the background is set back. And I have a piece of gold matte cardstock. Uh, you know, any kind of cardstock that has a white core to, to it will work. A lot of patterned papers would work. A lot of metallic cardstocks would work. Um, silver would work. I've got black, a black metallic or a black glossy here. As long as really, if it's white on the backside, this technique is great. And a lot of us have a matte surgery or matte surgery. I just read surgery on the screen, a, a matte cardstock like this metallic. Okay. So by the way, glossy would work well too. So I'm going to put this in the, my hair, um, I'm going to put this in the embossing folder, how it, how you normally would, where we're going to make that raised pattern. And I have my die cut machine. I have mine set up to um, the same 2D emboss. And I have my, the little dial to negative one. I, so you one and I are pretty close. Two. Yeah. Yep. But usually I had it on zero and it, I've had no problems. Okay. So now we have this beautiful pattern here. I mean, I love that looks ah. like, you know, like a pressed metal. I don't know. That looks it's gorgeous, just like it is. <laughs> I know. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Um, this, By the way, this is, um, Simon says stamp gold matte cardstock, but really mm. any should work. Now what mm -hmm. I have here is a sanding block. Uh, these are very inexpensive. Apparently you can get these in makeup stores, but I don't do the whole makeup thing, so I have no idea. But like a light sandpaper would also work for this. And now I'm going to sand gently over this. And what will happen is we'll sand the gold off the raised areas. It's kind oh, of an man. annoying sound. I apologize. But what's going to happen with this gold mat it, and it's, if you have like a color matte, or I'm sorry, a color metallic, like a red metallic cardstock, what's going to happen is it's going to take that gold color off and reveal the silver that's behind it. Oh, that it's is like gorgeous. that gold. So wow. this is going to give. Oops, this is going to give us like a two tone, which is lovely for the holidays, but it would also be great for like a wedding mm -hmm. card. So oh, yeah. 50th right. anniversary, anything like that. Yes. That's beautiful. That makes now, so much of a difference. You wouldn't think it would be like that drastic, but it makes so much of a difference. Can you? Yes. Can you see that silver peeking through? Does it show up? It does. Now, if I kept sanding, the silver would end up coming off and a white would be revealed. So that's another option that you can do. Let me show something else real quick and then I'll pass the baton back to you. This is uh, black glossy cardstock, and I'm going to put it in the embossing folder the same way. And you can do this with any embossing folder that you may have. I just really like um, this tapestry, and it's perfect for that gold technique, isn't it? It is. You're making me wonder if I took some foil and foiled some white polyglaze, if I could mimic that too. You know, I I was thinking about doing something with foil, and I... We just, we had to boil it down to four techniques, didn't we? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we <kept going. laughs> Maybe we'll have a second edition of this. Yeah. Okay, so oh this gosh. is Look the black that. glossy on the front and the white on the back. You can see the recessed. Now this, what you can do is sand the raised areas off. Now you could really spend the time to patiently make sure you, you know, sand a good amount and so that your berries become more round. But the best thing to do is to go light-handed and go circular. If you have a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around like an acrylic block so you have something flat. 
that is pushing that sandpaper across, but you can see why this is so easy, these blocks, and they're very inexpensive. Wow, All right, so that is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That is wait, stunning. Oh no. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's better. Look at that. So that is just a different way to use it, right? I mean, yeah, totally. You, I love how like rustic it is, you know, it's it's just got such a rustic feel to yep. it too. So now you can go and add color onto that exposed white. And the black is glossy. So it's going to resist that. So you can see I can add some color in. Oh you can my go God. to direct paper or you can go with a brush. Maybe add a, let me get another color. Oh, let's get some passionate pink. So you could really have some fun adding different colors to a background and you just buff off the excess. That is so You could do a rainbow. There you go. Now this you could do with the gold. Like if I would have kept sanding this and taken off the silver and exposed the white, you could do like a sea glass over it and kind of have a patina -y kind of uh, feel to it. But I think this is fun too. And the gloss resists the ink we put on top, so we just wipe it away. So there is how you can use sandpaper with your um, white core cardstock. If it's white on the back, and especially if it's a, some sort of gloss or metallic on the front, this works really well. Beautiful. Just a completely different look. So that's my first technique. All right. We got two down. Fantastic. Woo, woo, woo. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. All yes, right. So yes. I, I guess my next technique is going to be carved wood. This is a technique that I've done before, but it's got such a cool look, especially for... I don't know if you if you've got a nature lover or even if you're looking for masculine cards, I think that this is a really fun technique for that kind of thing. So what I'm And it's a do... good backdrop to any of your floral images. And I've never tried this technique. So I need to I need to do this sometime. Isn't it I'm fun like to watch it again? You and I haven't tried a lot of each other's techniques that we've shared before, but I, I think, you know, Jennifer and I were talking about this. My camera's getting a little dark. I don't know why, but um, Jennifer and I were talking about this and, um, you know, she's done some of these techniques on her channel. I've done some of my techniques on my channel, but we thought if we could put these videos together for you guys as a reference, then you'd be able to save this to a playlist of techniques and you'd be able to come back to this and refer to it and just bang, eight techniques. Maybe you want to have yep. an embossing folder day. So, okay. So, so next time you're stumped, next time you're stumped, refer back to this. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock here, and I am going to use my score buddy. Now I'm going to trim this down to an even number. Right now it's at four and a quarter, but I want to make it an even four inches. Because remember, once you do these techniques, you can take these different backgrounds and you can just trim them down with dies or whatever you want to make them fit your card project. So I'm going to trim this down to four inches. I'm not worried about this side because it's not going to matter all that much. This side happens to be five and a half inches. So now what I'm going to do here is I am going to score this at every half inch mark. Okay. So I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to go from four to three and a half and I'm going to do a score line. Then I'm going to go down to three and do a score line. Two and a half two, one and a half, one. Then I'm going to flip it because it's just tight to get in here. And I'm back at four inches. I'm going to go down to three and a half. So that just makes it a little easier for me to do that last one. And I'm just using a simple layering white cardstock. This is the Gina K Designs layering weight white cardstock. And then what I'm going to do next is I am going to use um, an ink pad. I'm going to use craft ink, and I'm just going to go lightly down the cardstock to add a little bit of color and to define these lines. And that's going to make it look like wooden boards. So you can see I'm just rubbing the card, the, the ink pad down this piece of cardstock. 
and you can see G Gina, does it matter what weight you cardstock you use? Somebody asked. It doesn't. You can use, okay. you know, uh, you can use a hundred pound Nina. You can use the 120 pound Gina K designs base weight white. You can use our ivory for this if you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's easier to score a lighter weight paper. So if you have hand issues, sure. it's easier to score it. And I'm always using these pieces on top of other pieces and on top of card bases. So layering weight cardstock is a little less expensive. Okay, so now I've done that. Now it is time to get my embossing folder. So let me do that. Let me get this back with the intricut. I'm going to zoom out. Last night, people were asking me to zoom out. I think some people watch on those like 72 inch big screen TVs. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> the scariest part is the front shot when it comes to those. I know. It's, that's how I feel about me. It's like, should we move that camera back? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to use the tapestry folder, and you're going to be able to see Yay. now the difference between this spectacular gold and glossy black technique that Jennifer did and a more um, rustic kind of technique that I'm going to do. Okay, so you want the part that presses into the design, you want that on the top. So you basically, what you want to do with this is you want to lay your cardstock here and you want to make sure that when you run this through that the impression is going to push downward, if that makes sense. Okay. So we're going to stick that in there and then we're going to go ahead and run this through. Okay. Hey, Gina, what color ink did you use again? On my last one? Oh, no, I, used, I, used, I used craft ink first. Craft. Okay. Craft. Yeah. yeah. And you can use Sandy Beach or, you know, if you want a darker look, you certainly can do that. That's not a problem. All right. So hopefully I did this right. And I did. Okay. It's always scary. And don't feel bad uh -huh. if you do this and <laughs> made it go in the wrong direction. Just don't worry about it. Just, it's only cardstock. It's not going to, you're going to be fine. Okay. So now yep. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this magic happen here. This is what I love. So I am going to. I'm going to use two more browns. This is dark chocolate and this is warm cocoa. I'm going to start with warm cocoa. Now watch the way this pattern starts to become defined and starts to look like you actually etched or carved into this like it's wood. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Isn't that fun? Oh. And as long as you keep it kind of like not super solid. You don't want to go over it. You want to keep it more streaky so that it has that wood grained finish to it. Now that's my first pass. Now I'm going to go back with dark chocolate and darken this whole thing up a little bit. And remember, every time you rub down on your cardstock, it's not going to hit exactly the same spots. So you're going to get a little bit of that craft in there and a little bit of the warm cocoa. And now yeah. a little bit of this dark chocolate, which is going to grab all around the details and kind of define everything a little bit better. Look at that. So you're going very light handed, right? I'm actually putting a little bit of pressure on oh, it. Oh, are you? Okay, because good. It's a flat ink pad. Um, it's still not sinking down into the design too much. You might see a few gotcha. little spots okay. like that, but I mean, I'm not, you're right, Jennifer, when you say I'm not putting heavy pressure, I'm not really grinding on it, but um, I'm not going with such a light touch that you're not going to be able to see it. That's beautiful. Jennifer, you mentioned something earlier about adding a little bit of turquoise in there for a little patina look. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to go with a little tranquil teal and just add a little bit of that in there. Can you see over here how it just changed the color? Yep. It just makes it look a little bit more antiqued, a little bit more oh, weathered. That's pretty. There we wow. go. So that is the carved wood technique. Wow. That's that fun. would be beautiful on like on a frame. You know, like <laughs> do strips that and glue it on a frame. So yes. Pretty. And for our friends that scrapbook, they could oh, actually yeah. cut the center out of this and create a frame for oh. a scrapbook page. That's a great idea, Jennifer. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I bet as that ink kind of soaks in and you know softens, it's going to even blend and be even better. Gorgeous. Definitely. 
Definitely. All oh, right. Love it. Okay. All right. Well, okay, Jennifer. Now <laughs> we've got three back techniques to down. Back to you. I'm gonna we're tag team teaming. I'm tagging back to you. Awesome. You're in. <laughs> tagging back to me. Okay. I'm gonna since we both just used the tapestry. Um, I'm going, going to switch to the snowflakes. But this is something that I've done this technique with a variety of embossing folders. I do think some techniques are better with certain types of folders than others, but the ones that we're doing so far, I think really are pretty universal. You can use a lot of different designs and definitely this technique, you can use a variety. So we're gonna change things up a little bit and we're gonna ink inside of our folder. Ooh. So for this one, I want to feel the inside and feel for the side where the pattern is bumpy. So the pattern here is raised. So that's the side I'm gonna ink. This side, the background is raised. So I can feel the background. So I don't want that side, this side where it's raised. Now you could do the other side, but for this particular technique, I put the ink on the raised pattern. I'm using Versamark ink, but you can use any embossing ink that you may have. And I'm just kind of gently tapping this on the raised area. Now, if you push too hard, you're gonna get a lot of the ink on the background that's recessed, that's set back. So I'm just kind of going on the raised area, just tapping around. And I'm doing it a lot because since I'm tapping so lightly, I want to make sure I better my chances of um, actually getting ink on all the raised areas. You could use a brayer for this, but I find with um, an ink pad like embossing inks have, it, it's fine to just tap that way. Uh, norm, you'll see later, I'll do like a swirling motion, but with this ink, sticky ink like this, we want to um, just tap. So I have ink on this side and I can see I got some ink in the background, but I'm not going to worry about it. It'll still look good, I promise. So now on the other side, this is the side without the ink. I'm putting my cardstock and then I'm going to close it and make sure I don't let it shift. All right. Where do my plates go? All right. I'm going to put this between my plates. One of the things I like about this machine from you, Gina, is that I don't have to fuss with sandwiches. I can just use the two plates and adjust that dial and it makes it so much better. So much easier. Now you're making me hungry. You don't want to <laughs> talking, about talking about sandwiches. Talking about sandwiches. That's funny. <laughs> Jennifer, right, so can I ask you a away. question? Sure. Can I, okay. Um, so you're doing this with Versamark ink. Could you do this mm -hmm. with a pigment ink as well? Sure. We're gonna do we're gonna do heat embossing. So any pigment ink, like a white pigment ink would work or any kind of clear embossing ink. Oh, that looks so pretty just the way right, it is. This is, yeah, this as is, remember that um, embossing ink is kind of like a watermark ink. So it's just gonna make your cardstock a bit darker. So notice how the place where we put the ink, the ink was, per, or the embossing folder pressed that ink in and it leaves it a little bit darker in there and it makes that impression. So this almost, I wish you could see it in real life. It looks like, um, when you have like a leather purse and they press the name of the company in the side, that's what it looks like. It's almost looks kind of soft, but so you could leave this as is, you could have used a white pigment ink to do that and just leave it as is. But what I'm gonna do is add embossing powder. Now you can tell I did get Versamark ink, that sticky ink in the background, but I'm gonna show you how to clean it up. So don't worry about that. I'm gonna add silver embossing powder to this. Now, when I add the powder, you could do whatever kind of embossing powder you want here. When I add the powder, because we want powder to go into those little pushed in areas, we want to make sure we're laying our paper flat when we put the powder on, because that way it falls into those little areas. You can see that powder is laying all over the background and it's gonna look like a hot mess at first but I'm gonna figure out how to fix that here in a minute because there's a little trick we can do. So I'm gonna tap off the extra. So I have embossing powder in all of those crevices where we press that ink in. And then I also have some on the background, but I don't want it on the background, on all that, what's, the background's raised in this case. So there are a few things you could do. You could take a lot of time with a paintbrush. I don't wanna do that. So I am just taking something with a flat edge and scraping that extra powder off the, 
the raised area. This is the Simon Hurley, like it's a the scraping tool. I don't know what it's called, but it's really meant to, for be um, to be like uh, when you put gels or paste over a stencil and you want to smooth it out. But it's also, I found, great for knocking off that extra powder that's on the raised. Now, if you don't have this, you could use a credit card or a gift card. You could use the side of a folded piece of cardstock. It's really up to you. Now, there might be a little bit of powder on the background still. I'm not going to worry about it. Just add more shine. But what's happened is now most of our embossing powder is in the those recessed snowflakes stuck to that Versamark ink we pushed in. All right, this might get a little loud. Sorry. So I love this I idea. I have to ask, it, do you recommend using a fine detail powder here, Jennifer, because of the fine detail design, or does it matter? You know, you probably would be, this is regular silver, but um, fine detail would probably get even in those crevices even better. I chose this embossing folder because it has a lot of detail to it. And I feel like this technique works really well with it, but I bet if you had a detailed powder, it would be good. Now, if you wanted to do this with like a sparkle embossing powder that has glitter in it, I recommend an embossing folder that isn't as detailed because the glitter doesn't really fit into these tiny little spots as well, but you definitely could do it. That makes sense. It really looks beautiful. So now we have another a completely different look. This is also pretty with like, silver embossing which just would make those snowflakes shiny darker and shiny in those areas so now you can see it's pressed in and shiny so the back side is where the snowflakes are raised and now so we kind of filled in all of those pushed down patterns with the silver embossing that's amazing i go. love it I love it. And, and another thing you can do, and I've done this before with your um, glitter, uh, what's it called? The, gel, the glitz, the, the glitz glitter gel. Glitz, yes. One thing that I have done in the past is just done an embossing folder. So say like, mm, well, I guess the backside, well, no, let me look at the backside of this. So this is, this has a pattern where it's pushed down. You can take your, um, the glitz gel glitter glitz gel and smear it all over and then scrape everything off the raised area. And it would just sit in that, in those, that pattern, in those little crevices, those little valleys, and you would end up with sparkling, sparkle and shine in your pattern also. So you could use embossing powder like we did, or you could use like a glitter paste or um, gel or something. Well, that's fantastic. I love that. And I love that you've got the sparkle and shine in there, but it's so subtle. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. like just this big, bold amount of embossing. It's just kind of pressed in there and it's very subtle. It makes a really delicate background. Love yeah, that idea. It's, it's fun. It's just, you know, it. it's just another way to use, use your embossing folder creatively. And I think one thing that we should note is what the video can't capture is the texture of all yeah. of our techniques. And that's, I wish people could reach in the screen and feel it. It's just such a unique look. So it really is that that's my, uh, I don't know. Was that number two? That was, <laughs> I, lost track. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, Jennifer, what about this? Can you use this? This is the stencil pal from ThermaWeb. You can use that. Yes. Yep. So if so if somebody that has that, they could be a, yep. use this kind of, and a lot of times with this one, people were trying to use this end, but it's really this end. The it's curve flat, is just yeah. so it's comfortable in your hand. Yeah. So, but I like the idea of using a credit card too. Because yes. <laughs> then your or credit the, card is out. <laughs> it's handy. It's uh, ready to like go. a ruler, you know, like the side of a ruler would also work. I've yeah. tried that before. It's kind of harder to hold, but really an old, keep an old gift card in your craft room. I have an old like Starbucks gift card that yeah. ran out and I just, instead of them keeping it, I asked to keep it and I just keep it in here for scraping things off. So that's another option too. That's perfect. That's a Somebody great said technique. old hotel room keys. That's a good idea too. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay. So I think we've got four techniques down, four more to go. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All yes. right. So my we turn We got again. this. <laughs> yes. Okay. So my next one, I'm going to use the snowflake embossing folder because you did. And I want to be you when I grow up. So let me find it. Where did it go? Okay. You know, that's a bad idea, Gina. You know that. <laughs> You know better. <laughs> you know I love you. Okay, so I want to show you a fun technique called partial embossing. And you can do this two different ways. You can either just do half or a portion of your um, cardstock, or you can do two segments of your cardstock. You can mix and match embossing folders, or you can do this all with the same embossing folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my die cutting machine up here again. Okay. So I am going to use the, um, let's back up just a bit. I am going to use the snowflake embossing folder. And what I'm going to do, I do, the one thing I want to make sure that I'm doing is that I am using the same side for both techniques. So one thing that you can do, if you always want to know which side is the raised side and which side is the, um, the indented side, the recessed side, is you can take something, I don't have one here, but you could take something like a Sharpie. This is a Copic marker, but you could just put an R on the raised side. This way you don't have to stop and feel it every single time. So I actually just put an R here on the raised side. This way, when I do this technique, I'm only going to have to, I don't have to think. I can know that if the R is up the first time through, the R needs to be up the second time through. Now, I don't know if this dried very well, so I am going to use a paper towel and just kind of rub it off here just to make sure I don't get ink all over me. But I recommend doing it either with a Sharpie or with a label maker, and you can just put a little raised or a little R on all of your embossing folders, and that just makes it easy. Okay. So I have my platform and my cutting mat, and I'm gonna use a piece of white cardstock here. Sometimes I wonder if it'd be better to use a colored piece, but we'll see how this goes. Now what I'm gonna do, making sure my raised side is on the bottom, because I wanna press up and have my design protruding. I want you to be able to feel the texture. What I'm going to do here is I am just going to do a portion of this and I want to make sure that it's straight. Okay. I got to put my glasses back on here. I'm acting like I'm like I can see and I can't. So I want to make sure that I've got this straight because I am going to create a panel here where I leave space for a greeting. So I want my whole design to cover the whole card, but I want a spot on my card where I can actually stamp my greeting right across, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I've got that where I want it, and I'm going to place my top plate on top, but I am not taking it past the edge here. So if you could see what I mean, let me get into the camera more. Can you see the embossing folder is sticking out? You don't want to put your plate over that because then you're going to press a line in there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if it's not straight, you know, if it's not perfect, you don't want a crooked line. So I've got it where I want it to be. I am placing this right down to the end of the design, but not all the way to the very end of the embossing folder. And now I'm going to send that through. Okay. Now, I've got my design just partially done. Can you see that? Just oh, partially yes. done. Okay. So pretty. Now you could use a different embossing folder. Let's say you wanted to use the Swiss dot on the other side. You could put the Swiss dot on the other side and have a different texture on the bottom part. But before we do that, Ooh. what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna move this out of the way, I'm gonna get my score buddy and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna find the closest score line and I am going to score a line going across here bring that down very smart a little bit it helps to define that edge it just finishes the edge so nicely see that 
creates Gorgeous. a really pretty finish. Now, I've got a good visual too when I put my other side on. Maybe I want to use the snowflake again. Maybe I want to use a different pattern like a Swiss dot. Either way, I can do either mm. one. Which should I do, Jennifer? Should I do the same one just to show them? Or Swiss a different dot. Swiss dot? Okay. All right. I'll do yeah, this. Because you dot. and I, that's that's like the classic best embossing folder. But for some reason, I didn't use it today. Okay. But that's so my I'll... most used embossing folder. It is a it is a good one. And here is my matches raised, everything. It does. And it's so delicate that you know it mixes with any pattern. So here's my raised side. And just like I use this one with the raised side on the bottom, I want my raised side on the bottom of this one. Now I'm gonna line this up down here and find the perfect spot. These are a little trickier to line up because you are um you know, you want your dots to be straight. If it's a if it's a scattered pattern like this, if it's a little crooked, it's not the end of the world. But this, you want it to be straight, right? Okay, so let me just hold that and get my platform in here. And then I'm going to put my cutting mat on top. And once again, not going to the edge, just going to the edge of the design, okay? Awesome. And now I'm gonna run that through. Just trying to hold everything. Okay. Alrighty. Your now, tip of going to the edge of the design as opposed to the edge of the folder is really makes a big difference. Because when I've tried this, I get that, like, it looks like a fold it, the, on the edge and it doesn't look as good. So I it like that idea. Clean. Okay. So yeah. that's good. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to redefine this line because I did kind of crush it just a little bit. And then I'm going to find a line over here that's going to work. Sorry, I had my paper just a hair crooked. There we go. And now I've created a little Look opening that. there to stamp my greeting. Looks like I double that's scored awesome. there. But if you double score by accident, then by all means, double score on purpose. You know, like you have sure. one line, then do a second line just to make it but you can see now you could take that and you can set that up on your misty and then you could stamp Ooh. right in the center there. You know, this would be great if somebody's looking for a last minute gift for somebody, you could do a set of cards like this. Just grab all your embossing folders. Yep. Do a set of cards like this, stamp different greetings right there in the center and you would have a great set of cards and it really wouldn't take that long. No, it wouldn't. And you know, something like this, it's, if you did it with like the gold or the silver cardstock, it would make a great yeah. 50th anniversary, 25th anniversary. This sure. could be a very easy wedding card. You could even just yeah. cut a little flower out in white and just put it on there or a butterfly and just for your wedding. So it makes it super easy. So that is the partial, um, partial, what is it called? Embossing, <laughs> partial embossing. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> so that's you know that technique. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would also be neat with that is like if you wanted to make some last minute Christmas tags or cards, you could die cut a circle and do like the top half one embossing folder, the bottom half one embossing folder, and then put two from right in the middle. Right in the middle. I mean, that's yep. just that technique could be done on die cuts, backgrounds. I that's cool. Yeah. You win. Yeah. You no, win my favorite no, no, no. technique of the day. <laughs> no, just my favorite technique that I'm dying to go back and and give a, give a whirl, you know? Well, I can't vote yet because I still have two more techniques to see oh. from you. <laughs> well, so uh, let's see. Uh, my next two techniques kind of go hand in hand. So um, one of the my favorite things to do with embossing folders is to ink inside of the folder to transfer that ink onto the cardstock. And you can get like a, you, I think you call this letterpress, mm -hmm. like a yeah. faux letterpress. Um, I thought it would be good to show the difference between inking the two different sides. So that's, yeah, I, I've I'm never show done the other one. side and then, before. Can't wait to yeah, see. Yeah, so then we can do a variation with it for the second. So let me show All you right. what I got here. Um, I have my, because I don't have much space on my desk, my intercuts like got one leg hanging off the edge of my mat. It's, it's a mess here. Anyway, um, you were talking about the recessed and raised. What I do is I go in and when I get my folder, I look at, I put, I look at it and I look at, 
uh, what position it would be in to have normal embossing folder results. So in that case, the right here would be the background raised and up here is the pattern raised. And I put your, the label of what the, the um, embossing folder is there. And so I know whenever I get this, if I put cardstock in right here and this is facing up, it's gonna give me the results that I intended for, you know, where the pattern is raised. So that's another, another tip. That's the only reason I knew this was called lattice. Yeah, I I, I need to be more organized like you. You're super organized. Oh no, I'm a oh, no no no. Dumpster fire. If you only <laughs> only knew what my room looked like right now. Okay, so we're gonna do both methods, showing the difference between inking the two sides. I am going to demonstrate with the Gina K white pigment ink because I think the results are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, as far as what color cardstock you can use. It doesn't matter if you used a lighter color of cardstock, the white pattern would be a little more subtle. So I'm going with a bit darker. This is a uh, plum punch. So I'm going to use uh, that for both of my examples, but we could use tropical teal. You really, I think this just looks best, more impactful with darker colors of cardstock. Um, this is one of the tips that I find helpful with this technique because sometimes you don't get the ink transfer the first time around. This is one of those that you wanna kind of practice with and play with. So I like to temporarily adhere my cardstock into my folder so that if I do this technique and I'm not happy, I can do it again and it's already there. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of my Gina K tape runner here. You can see there's just a little there. And that way I can tape it temporarily into my folder. Now, what I'm going to do first is, let's see, I'm going to tape it onto, you pick. Gina, which side should I tape it onto? It doesn't matter. Uh, the flat side. Okay. So this is the side where the background is, the flat background is raised up. So when I run my fingers over it, the pattern, the lattice is recessed. I'm going to put my cardstock there. Um, you can line it up. You can do however you want. But I'm just temporarily adhering it in there. Now, on the other side, this is where the, I got something in there, uh, the pattern is raised up. So that lattice is bumpy. And I'm going to put white pigment ink on, on there. Now, you could use other inks. You could use dye ink here. You could use pigment ink. You could use Versamark ink. It's totally up to you. If you have something where it's hard, where you're, you want to make sure you don't get the ink into the background, use a brayer to apply it because then you're less likely to get it into the background. So I have white pigment ink on the raised pattern and I'm gonna close this and then run it through. I think my my plates need a, need a leash because I keep putting them <laughs> down and can't find it. All right, so the only reason I'm holding this by the way is my machine is sitting half on the glass mat and half off. So it's not suctioning just right. If I put it right in the center, I wouldn't have to hold it. That's what Gina has going on. All right. So now what's happened is the white pigment ink that was on the raised side pushes in. So oh, you have that beautiful. letterpress look. The pattern oh. is pressed in. So it's hard to tell, but the diamonds are raised and the white lines are pushed in. So now because I have this taped here, if I want to repeat the process, I can and then I can get some more white ink on there. Now, another fun thing about taping your cardstock in there is say you want like an, you have white cardstock in here and you have dye, colorful dye inks that you're putting onto the raised area of the embossing folder. You could do like pink at the top and then do the technique and then do some yellow there in the middle and do the technique and you could have different colors transferred. Um, but again, it, it's really up to you what kind of ink you use, but I really feel like when you're trying this technique for the first time, white is just really cool. That really looks good, Jennifer. It's like, it takes that lattice and turns it into a tile. Yep. It's like grout. It's so cool. Now this, yeah. you could leave. Go ahead. I, I just want to, there, there's been a, this question has come up a couple of times and I just want to make sure everybody knows these embossing folders are plastic. So you can take them to the sink and you can get an old yes. toothbrush and yes. you can get some dishwashing liquid and just scrub yep. all this ink right out and they'll come out as clean as brand new. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I mean, all of these inks, you know, that we're using, you can wash right off and it's absolutely no problem. Now, if you want to, you could leave this as is. So you can see the back that tore a little bit because I use the tape, but that's not the side I'm using. The pattern is raised here. In this case, the diamonds are raised. What you can do is like gently rub a darker ink over it and kind of pick up that pattern a bit. Oh, wow. I'm doing it very gently. So it's kind of, I don't want it all to be in the same place. I want it to kind of be uneven just for a different look. If I wanted even ink over the whole thing, you could use a brayer here. You could do different colors, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of give it a, a worn look here. See That's how you gorgeous. can make that stand out even more. And that this is, is also fun with metallic inks too. So you could Ooh. use like a metallic silver. That's gorgeous. So there you go. So that is, this version is where you put the ink on the side of the folder where the pattern is raised. So the, the pattern was the white or was the lattice. So I put ink on that and that will give you this result. And next, when it's my turn again, we will do the opposite. So you can see the difference. I love the way that looks. That I've never tried that before. I've never really, seen, I've done the, the letterpress where you do the background, but I've never done it where, you know, you get the detail like that. And I'm surprised how well that really, that sticks on there and how it looks great. It really does. I love that. And my recommendation is if you're trying this technique for the first time to pick a folder like this one or the Swiss dot, something with a small pattern. If maybe mm -hmm. it's embossing folder where there's like a big flower in the center with lots of solid space around it, that one you got to kind of work up to and get kind of used to um, doing the technique. So any of the folders we use today would work really well yeah. for this particular technique. I bet the snowflake would look great too, because you'd be pressing Ooh, white yeah. snowflakes into that dark cardstock. Yep. That's a brilliant technique. I really like that. All right. Well, I'm ready for my final technique. Yes. And my final technique is one that I've been doing probably for, I don't know, I think the first time I did this was like 2009. <laughs> but and I, I love it. it. And every time you do it, and I've never done it. I, you got to try it. It's so much fun. I know. And, you know, we all have an iron that we don't use, right? So why not put it in your craft room? Today, <laughs> we're going to use it for the wax paper technique. So yes. what, I've, what I've done here is I've just taken some wax paper. This is wax paper. It says I bought it at Ben Franklin. I know they have it at Walmart. They probably have it at Target. Any wax paper, but it has to be wax paper, not parchment, because parchment paper doesn't have wax on it. So it has to be wax paper. So you need the wax because you're going to use a hot iron and you're going to transfer the wax off of this paper onto your cardstock. So what I have here is, I don't have anything here. Let me see. I'm going to need to cut some white cardstock. So I'm going to do that. I've got my little paper cutter here and I am going to get the piece of white cardstock and I'm going to cut it in half and in half again. So let me go to the five and a half. Let me get my glasses back on. Go to the five and a half inch mark. And then I'm going to cut it at the four and a quarter inch mark. Now I've cut this piece of wax paper down to four and a quarter by five and a half. You can cut it a little bit smaller if you're using a good iron. I've got my old iron here. I don't really iron very much, but I do have a sewing iron that I use for clothing. So I don't care if I get something on the surface of this iron. Um, but if you're worried about that, then just take this down a little bit smaller so it fits inside the piece of cardstock. Mine might extend a little bit outside of the cardstock, but again, I don't care. Now I'm gonna take this piece of, um, wax paper, and I'm going to put it into the Petite Flourish embossing folder. And I'm going to emboss the waxed paper. Now for waxed paper, because it is so thin, I'm gonna increase the pressure a little bit on my die cutting machine. So I'm gonna turn it up so that it's about four, minus four. I'm gonna get a nice deep emboss here because this is like vellum. I mean, it is even thinner than vellum. It's super thin. So I'm gonna run this through. 
so that it's nice and tight. You can kind of hear it crunching in there. Okay, that was tight. Now, if you don't have this kind of die cutting machine, maybe you wanna add a cardstock shim or two on top of it to make sure that, you know, you get a nice deep impression. Okay, and now you can see here, I've got a design on my waxed paper. I do wanna give you one little tip here. If you want something a little bit different, you can do this same technique without an embossing folder. I know I'm going outside of what the show is, but all you <laughs> have to do is take the wax paper and crumple it up. This gives you an animal print. It looks very much like something, you know, like let's say you were doing a background for some jungle animals or something like that, where you wanted to have a cute animal type print in the background, you will get a pattern that looks like this. So that's oh, cool. another way to do it. But if you want a more, um, like a more defined pattern, definitely use your different embossing folders to see how it looks. Now I'm going to go do back. Do you have to use, a, real quick, do you have to use a certain type of of embossing like can it be any pattern it can be any pattern at all awesome, awesome. it's going to give you a different look than the embossed image though um it's not going to okay. be quite so defined but so you might not want to do it with like a big flower because that might look a little weird you might not get the definition that you want but you could do this with snowflakes or tapestry or anything really that that has kind of a swirly kind of pattern or something like that Okay, so I'm sandwiching these two together because I'm actually going to be able to do two at once because both sides of this wax paper have wax on them. So you're actually doing two at once, but they are going to look different um, because one will have a different pattern than the other because of the recessed and the protruding sides. So I have my iron turned all the way up and it's nice and hot and I am just going to iron all over this. I'm going to be careful not to burn my fingers here. Now, I will tell you right off the bat, because somebody's going to ask me, I have tried this with a laminator, and it does not work. Okay. So you would not, think it would work, but the it, same. it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. I don't think a laminator gets quite as hot as an iron. So, I so think question, do you, what setting did you say you had that on? I had it turned all the way up to the hottest on my iron. Okay. Yeah. I'm not familiar with irons. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it took me a while too. <laughs> what Ready is that to wear. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to do the other side. I flipped it over. I just want to make sure I get a little extra heat on there. And I'm being careful not to shift the cardstock because we don't want to smear the wax. Okay. So now I'm going to turn my iron off. I'm going to put it um, on the floor over here so I don't bump into it with my fingers by mistake. I'm just giving it a quick second to cool. And then I'm going to take this off. Now you have to remember which side you have your wax on because I promise you, you will not be able to see anything. So if you start adding ink and nothing happens, flip it over. It's probably the other side. You could mark yeah. little <laughs> bees on the back so you know which is the back. Gotcha. But now I'm going to use some blue denim ink here. This really looks spectacular with deeper, darker ink colors. And I am going to, you'll be able to see that each one looks a little bit different because of the different side of the embossing folder, but we'll start with this one. And I don't know which is which, that's the other thing. You just gotta get in there and see it. But can you see this pattern oh, that's emerging? That is so fun. Isn't that so fun? darker will show you more contrast. So right. darker is good here. Yeah. Right. It's very similar. It has a very similar feel to um, uh, Versamark Resist, where you just stamp with like embossing ink and then you ink over oh. that. And it just has that kind of feel. I know this is a weird pattern, but I'm going to I'm going to make it happen here. But the cool thing about this technique is this is a great background when you like you want some want a little bit of interest, but nothing that's distracting from whatever you put on top. This is a good go to option. Good, Definitely. Good technique. Definitely. So I'm going to mix some medium lilac in here. And we'll just blend those together. Ooh, pretty. 
those lilac colors and the orchid colors. Oh, they divine. are nice. They're so vibrant and they, I don't know, yes. they just feel extra juicy too. So when you're and they go well together, they do. They the really do. Families. Yeah. Yep. And I love how, so yeah, a few people ask, you want to make sure your steam is turned off and you're on high setting, right? Yeah. I have no water in the iron at all. I would just take okay. water out of your iron and you're on the highest setting. So there then you after you get that color on there, then I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to just rub off because it's going to sit on top of the wax. Sure. So I'm just going to rub that off and you can see what that looks like. And it's just a totally cool texture. Ugh. Now let's just take a look at the other one and see how different it is. It may not look drastically different. We'll start with the lilac this time. Yeah, this is the side I'm going to like better. Now this side looks yeah. a little bit more batik -y. kind of like yeah. a batik pattern. It's like so a... Um... It's a two for one technique, a really good two for one technique. Yeah, totally. And you know, you can cut these up and use them as borders, little strips down the side of your card. You don't have to use the whole panel if you don't want to, if you just want to add a little, just a little accent of something. And the patterns are so subtle that they don't really take away from whatever project you're doing. I'm gonna go back in with the, the blue denim now. So you're using blue here. denim and medium lilac? And medium lilac, right? yep. And uh, does it feel waxy? It doesn't. I don't feel anything on here. That's the thing. That's I can't so cool. even feel it to tell you which side would work. You know, if, if I started inking it and it, nothing was happening, that's the only way that I would know that I wasn't on the right side. You barely, I, I can't really feel anything. And so, so we'll just go back and we will rub away that excess. I don't know which side I like better, but I think it's this side. <laughs> I just like Gosh. that there's more busier, it's like a busier pattern. And you can see that yeah. this was the side that actually had the design on it. So it's a little bit more defined where this, you're Gorgeous. getting more of that background in there. Look at that. So that is the <laughs> wax paper technique using your embossing folders. So I'm, I keep thinking about last minute Christmas cards you could do with that technique. It would be cool. That folder, that technique, and then like do green ink mm -hmm. over it and then just cut it into a triangle and you'd have a gorgeous tree with that beautiful, yeah, beautiful wouldn't that be cool? Faux texture to it. Yeah, that would be great. And yeah, there's just, there's so many uses for these. There just really is. Even if you're just looking for some, some texture for your scrapbook pages, or if you're making a 3d type of project like a box yeah. and you want the lid to have a fancy texture to it. It's just wow. subtle enough, but you know, and depending on what folder you use, you're going to get all kinds of different looks. I just am, I'm blown away because with these different techniques today, some are like metallic and, and like ostentatious, then some are more subtle then some have a wood look. I just love all the different options that you can get all from the same folders. This and is, you know, this you know is the stuff that makes us giddy. I know, right? And you know what's really fun about this too? Like none of this is the traditional way to use an embossing folder, right? right? So yep. people have tons of embossing folders that they use in yep. a traditional way. This just stretches those supplies and gives you so many sure. new ideas. And they don't look, to me, this does not look like an embossing folder. No, This looks like, I don't all. know what this is, you know? Because yeah, it's perfectly it's smooth. smooth, right? So... That's awesome. All right. So Jennifer, well, you are I'm on. on for my last one. So Technique let's, eight. let's switch here. <laughs> so this is, yeah. The, so last time I put the ink, the white pigment ink on the raised pattern. This time I'm going to put it on the opposite. So you can see you get a different look depending on which side you ink. So once again, I have a piece so we can compare side by side. I have a piece. Actually, no, I'm going to switch it because you know what? One of my favorite colors in the whole wide world is that tropical teal. So I'm going to switch, but we'll still be able to do comparison. Putting a little bit of temporary adhesive there on the back, just a tiny bit. That's all you need. Now, this time I'm adding this to the side where the pattern's raised. So that lattice is raised. So we'll be inking up the opposite side of what we did before. I'm again using white simply because I want you to see a comparison. And you can, it just really depends on the folder. Like here, the raised area, there's a lot of it, right? So I can 
I can tap and, and press more or swirl. It just really depends. You want to be, you, I would have to be more careful if the raised area was a lot little, like finer detail. And again, you could do this with like a dye ink. You could do it with Gina's dye inks. If you do that, always make sure that you temporarily adhere your cardstock on the other side so that if you put the dye ink on, transfer it, and it doesn't all transfer, you can repeat the process as many times as you want to get the results you want. And each time it'll get a little more intense. Okay, so I have the white pigment ink on this side of the folder this time. I didn't get the ink all the way to the edge, but I'm gonna be trimming these backgrounds down anyways. So here we I'm go. so excited to see this. Yeah, now this one, notice there's a lot of white inked area, right? There's a lot of inked area. So it might not all transfer the first time. We may have to repeat it, but because we temporarily adhered that cardstock in there, that's easy to do. I used to try to repeat it and I didn't have it glued on the inside. So I had to, um, I had to um, try to pop it back onto the folder and it just wouldn't work. All right, so we got some, but right oh, here I need to get though. a little bit more. Oh, that looks so cool. And for anybody that's worried about like getting like sticky tape on your embossing folder, if you use a little bit of something like Goo Gone or a little alcohol or Gina K Design stamp cleaner, it'll just take the goo right off. You won't have to worry about it. And again, these are plastic. You can just wash them, scrub them, rinse them, let them air dry, yeah. and they're totally fine. So between, I had a little bit of goo in mine between this between the last technique and this one. I just, I have little, I keep in my craft room, those little alcohol swabs, you know, that mm, they yeah. have at the doctor's office. And I just used that and that took the glue right off. No problem. All right, so there, look at that. So now oh. we have the white pressed back into the diamonds. And again, this will clean off very easily. You could either use a baby wipe or you could use, um, you could use your tidy towel or you can just take it to the sink. Now, when I pulled that off, you might have seen I tore a little bit here. Nobody's going to see, but I forgot the way to remove this to what? The way to do this to remove it without that happening is instead of pulling it off, kind of do a little twisty twist. Mm. If you do a little twisty twist, it will pop off better. You're not going to see right. that, though, when you tape it down. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I've done that before, and I learned the twisty twist, but I also often forget. Now with white pigment ink, remember that ink kind of sits on the surface. So if you have any areas where maybe you aren't happy or whatever, I'm fine with this. But if like you're, an area where maybe it's too heavy inked, just use a cloth to kind of buff it off. But now I can step this up too, like we did last time. But let me get uh, my tranquil teal out of my little neighborhood here. And now this is gonna get ra on the raised areas only. So on that lattice, and it'll just make it stand out more. And oh, also you can great. go in some areas and do like darker if you want. You could do a different color, maybe add some green to it. Like I could have come in with like fresh asparagus and add some green to the raised areas. So these are different looking patterns. Totally. And this one, the white is in the lattice. And this one, the white is in the background. That is so gorgeous. It just shows and that, it, I love, this, I, I just, I'm blown away because I love how it just, it looks pretty solid. And it's like, you've got two different colors of cardstock mixed together there, but you don't, it's just that, it's like yep. that film of white just brought the color up a notch. Sure. And now if you, like, if I had done this technique with the snowflake embossing folder, one of the versions would have white snowflakes with a bold color background. The other would have a white background with bold snowflakes. So you get the opposite. And so it's definitely a technique worth trying with any embossing folder. Try inking the two different sides of the folder and see the different results you get. So it's just a I good go-to technique. That was great. That Your techniques were amazing. I love them. I have a question So are though. yours. I have a question yes. for you about your techniques. Um, somebody was asking about 3D folders and also mm -hmm. asking about like 
thicker folders. And I think when they say thicker folders, they mean the 3D ones. 3D. Mm -hmm. I don't have any 3D folders. I mean, I have right. a couple that I purchased from Simon Says Stamp and Tim Holtz yep. and just so that I could test them with my machine to make sure the machine yep. worked well. But um, I don't believe that my techniques would work well with 3D. This is, These are really more 2D techniques for my techniques. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Um, let me think. Remind me the wax one. I think the wax might work for the, that. It might. Yeah, it might. You just you're going to lose the 3D ness. You'll still get a right. beautiful design, but you're going to lose that 3D ness when it comes right. to that. And I shouldn't say that because the split embossing will definitely work. The partial embossing that will definitely yep, work. That'll yep. definitely yep. work. Um, I'm not sure about the carved wood. That one, I would just say, you know, the best thing to do when I don't know if something's going to work, I try it. It's a try piece it. of paper. It's so fun. Totally. And if it does work, then come in, you know, tell us. <laughs> share right, it with right. us. Tell us here in the comments. Come back to the YouTube video and share what you did and what worked because we want to see it. I some of these, though, if, I was just going to say some of these. If you have both types of embossing powder, yeah. that might, it might work. But what I recommend is if you're trying new embossing folder techniques, try with a traditional yeah. 2D embossing folder, which is what all of Gina's are. Mm -hmm. It's a great way. I mean, I find it gives the best results with all techniques, but then you can go and try them with the 3D. And there's a difference. I mean, so like this is a, a, a 2D embossing folder. This is one of Gina's. This is 3D. This one's from Simon. So you can see there's a difference in thickness. Mm -hmm. And the 3D just has more variation. Some of it's really raised, some of it's only a little raised, and then you got the flat. And so there's some of the techniques might be a little bit trickier to do, but once you get really good at it with a 2D, but honestly, I really feel like all of the techniques that we demonstrated today would work better with, um, with more forgiving, I guess, you know, yeah, I more think foolproof so. with the traditional. And I saw a lot of people ask with 3D embossing folders, um, you can use the intricate with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So in fact, you definitely can use them. You made a video featuring the intricate yep. and you showed how to do that and your results were beautiful. Yep. And I showed yep. how to do it too, but I don't have as much experience with 3d and folder 3d folders as you sure. do, because I don't have them in my collection and I tend to use what I have. Right. So, um, you know, check out Jennifer's intricate video because you're going to learn a lot about the machine and a lot about what it can do. And she's got some really cool techniques in that, that video. Yeah. It, I, I just wanted to put it, put it to the test to see if I in fact could use that for everything and not have to remember sandwiches. The only trick is 3d embossing folders. This is one of the reasons 3d embossing folders are really tricky is everybody's are a different thickness. Yeah. There are some that are 3d that are really thick and some that are medium thick, mm -hmm. but the, the traditional embossing folders that we think work best with what we did today, they're all generally the same thickness. So you can yeah. just follow along with what we did today. Yep. But Gina's got some beautiful, like classic go-to traditional designs that would, in embossing folders that would work great with all of these techniques. So, And I kind of like having some simple designs in my collection because yeah. when you want a little bit of texture, but you really don't want it to take away from the focal image of the card, a lot of those 2D yeah. folders are great for that. So even 100%. if you're just getting started, maybe pick up a yeah. 2D embossing folder and give it a try. And then you can Get always- Get that tapestry. Expand. I love that tapestry. <laughs> I do <one>. too. <laughs> I do too. So pretty. Well, we have to tell everybody what we're going to do, what we're going to try to yes. do. Okay. Yes. So- Go ahead, Jennifer, tell them. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so I told you I'm a mess. No. So Gina and I are always texting about how much fun we have doing this because so um, we just, we work well together and, you know, the whole time I'm, I can kind of tell what she's thinking and she can tell what I'm thinking. That's kind of fun. So we thought it would be fun if, and, and rewind a little bit. Last time we went live together, we did we were showing the fuse and foiling techniques mm -hmm. and we got into this rhythm where we were kind of going back and forth with techniques, just sharing more and taking turns. And so we came up with the idea of doing tag team techniques. 
and making it like a regular thing. So like we did today, you know, it's tag you're it and she shares a technique and then tag you're it and I share a technique. And so we're thinking of making this a regular, a regular gig. Yep. Yeah. Right. We're going to try to do it once a month, maybe twice a month yes. if we can. Ooh. And I said to Jennifer, like, you know, what do you think? And she's like, yep, until we run out of techniques. So, <laughs> but you and I have been, we've both been making videos for the better part of 15 years or yeah. so, right? Sure. Um, so I don't know that we'll run out of techniques because we can always go back and revisit the oldies too. And the reason why I like doing that is because mm -hmm. videos like this, like I said earlier, this is a great resource. All the techniques for embossing, not all, yeah. but a big chunk of techniques for embossing folders yeah. in, in one video. Maybe we'll do yep. a big chunk of techniques for stencils in another video yep. or layered stamps. There's just, there's an unending amount of things that we can yes. come up with. And sometimes it might be things like vellum, you know, yeah. it doesn't, you know, just a bunch of ways to use vellum creatively. So yeah, absolutely. This, this can be fun. We did that well, once before too. I don't know if you remember, but you and I did wreath builder techniques. We were going back and oh, forth. Yes. Can you remember that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think just we just naturally do that because we get excited. We do. So it makes sense just to make it official, right? What we're, what we did today is exactly what we do in real life when we're sitting across from each other at a table and we're stamping like, <laughs> oh, let's try this. Oh, look, you got to try this. Just back and forth, back and forth. And it feels really good to be able to share that with everybody here because, you know, you guys give us ideas and you post fantastic projects yeah. in our Facebook groups. Jennifer's Facebook group is Share Handmade Kindness. My Facebook group is Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. You guys are constantly sharing amazing ideas yep. that we feel like we're all kind of sisters in this, right? And yep. brothers. Oh, yeah. And brothers. We've and, got a few brothers. And, you know, I, if I remember correctly, we also, yeah, my, my brother's here. He's, <laughs> hey, he's Mike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but if I remember correctly, when we're together, we also do this with food. I'm like, you need to try this. And you're like, oh, you need to try this. <laughs> yes, we do. Absolutely. So we, we've been, we don't we've just been known to, to do crafting. that with drinks a little bit, too. Maybe, <laughs> Taste maybe. this wine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. If Heidi's there, maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. So th I think this will be a fun, you know, a fun addition. I can't promise we'll always stay this mature. Yeah. No, I hopefully not. Hopefully it will degrade a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure but it'll we're happen. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to call it Tag Team Techniques with Jennifer McGuire yes. and Gina Kay. And so yes. our next one will probably be sometime in January. Yep. And uh, we'll talk about it and figure out a date when you're not traveling and I'm not traveling and we're not doing our own things and 10,000 other classes and projects, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. We yeah. Will. It may not be the same day every month, but we will make sure to let everybody know far enough adva in advance so that yeah. you can join us. Yes. Because we love having you here. All right. And now yes. Tom is going to give away a gift certificate to one viewer that showed up today for us. We're going to give away a $15 Gina K Designs gift card. Mm -hmm. um, I used to give away my cards and throughout December, I started giving away gift cards because it's it's time for gifts, right? It feels sure the season of sure. giving, right? So yes. we might keep that up too. We'll see. All right. So Tom, I like it. do you have a possible winner? Okay. We're going to do a cheesy drum roll, please. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the winner is tonight, today, this afternoon, wherever you may be in the world, Angie Kujazinski. Angie. Yay, Angie. Congratulations, Angie. All you have to do is send your name and email address to info at GinaKDesigns.com and our customer service team will get that gift card out to you. Well, everybody, this- I bet, hold on. I bet Angie gets that tapestry embossing folder. Uh, that would be a That's great thing. To, yes. <laughs> yeah. She can get, she can almost get two embossing folders for that, yeah. that amount. Yeah. Yeah. Good. A good one. All right. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I love seeing yes. you. I love hearing your voice and- um, you're always so much fun. My sister, my, my you know, I sister. wish we could, I wish we could do this every day. Cause I told Mike right before this, I was just down. I was Aww. not, I was having one of those days. Now I feel better. So what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Let's do it again. 
<laughs> and the next day. And, and then the next day. day. <laughs> I'll um, just text you instead. Okay. That sounds good. Well, it was so much fun. And thank you to Not So Crafty Mike for being on all the controls and making your and uh, your part flawless. And Tom for making my part seamless over here. Um, everybody, Tom and I are not going to be back for a live tomorrow because tomorrow is our company Christmas party. Yay. Yeah, we get to celebrate our staff for all the hard work that they do here at Gina K Designs. And then our holiday weekend is going to start. So we won't be back until next Tuesday with another live. Jennifer, you got big holiday plans? After the holidays, the whole family, whole family, all wow. will be here. Oh, after that's, the holidays. That's so special though. If we, they come after the holidays, we get them longer. And mm. you know, it's that time of year where it's kind of, it's kind of like, oh, everything's over. Well, we have something to look forward to. So yeah, that's great. Oh, I love when everybody's together. Those are the best days. I'm going to be emailing you or texting you for recipe ideas. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll be looking at my phone after this live. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you well, for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. And next time we're going to do it on your channel. That's the other thing. Okay. Jennifer and I are going to be rotating. So we'll do one on my channel, one on her channel. So make sure to subscribe to both of us if you haven't. So, and, you'll never, and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss one of our tag team technique videos. All right, Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. And to thank everybody you. in the audience, thank you all so much for being here. We love you all so very much. Stay safe and healthy. We'll see you again real soon. Bye.